But first, more than 20 generals or admirals have moved within the city where they retired, and taxpayers paid almost $600,000 to cover all those costs. The largest claim came from retired General Andrew Leslie at $72,000, but here are some others. These are the top five claims for same city relocations. As you can see, they range from $72,000 all the way down to like $39,000. I do want to give a, a tip of the hat to Major General Glenn Hines, who was in St. Catharines and moved from one house to another for $468.60. Let's bring in the MVs to discuss all this, and we'd like to also talk about the horrific violence in Ukraine that's uh, raging right now. We'll bring that up at the end of the conversation. We're standing by for James Bazan. He's the Parliamentary Secretary of National Defense. He'll be joining us from Winnipeg momentarily, we hope. Mark Garneau is a Liberal MP, and he's in Quebec City. Matthew Kelway is an NDP MP, and he joins us from Toronto. All right, I want to go to you first, Mark. What's wrong with the government sounding the alarm over a move of Andrew Leslie's uh, worth? Uh, you know, really, it seems a little excessive to most Canadians. Isn't it worth them getting all excited about it? Well, it was definitely a, a very provoked uh, smear on uh, General Andrew Leslie. Notice how yesterday or the day before when they came out with this, nobody else was mentioned. So it was deliberately a smear against General Leslie because he has decided to work with the Liberal Party. Um, we're finding out more about these things, but the fact is the government was in power for eight years, never sounded any kind of alarm bell, and this is part of the agreement, actually, with uh, soldiers. In, in the case of Andrew Leslie, he gave up 35 years of his life. He went wherever the government told him 18 times. That's not uh, something that most people do, including going into combat. It's part of the sacred trust that you have between you and the, the government and the soldiers that at the end of it, you will allow them to move to the place that they'll call, if you like, their, their retirement home. All right, uh, Matthew, is this a sacred trust uh, payday for uh, retiring uh, top military officers, or do you think it should be changed? Well, I think the intent of the policy is, is a good one, Don, that uh, military personnel get uh, told where to... to uh, do their service and uh, it's very reasonable to say one last move upon your retirement uh, to a place that, that uh, you want to live. But uh, what's happened here is that uh, we have a long list of generals, at the top of which is uh, General Leslie, that have uh, moved within the city uh, and in General Leslie's case within a four minute drive of his other home and they've billed uh, Canadian uh, taxpayers enormous amounts of money to justify a four-minute drive and that is outrageous and the only uh, thing that I think is more outrageous that I've heard so far is this uh, very cynical liberal ploy to suggest that to to criticize uh, General Leslie is to attack all veterans and veterans programs and that's clearly not the case the intent of the policy is good I think what needs to be mentioned is that we've had a government now for eight or nine years that has either not been minding the store or turned a blind eye to this problem and uh, they've had 13 uh, senior military officers uh, get paid for moving uh, within minutes within the same city and another eight uh, who have moved uh, from the city out to the suburbs who have also claimed um, expenses. It's clearly not the intention of the program, and it's cost uh, the public uh, about $600,000, as you've mentioned. All right, fair enough. James Bazan joins Don, us now I'd from I'd like to come back to that when I get a chance. Uh, sorry? I'd like oh, okay, to get back, go back to that. I'll go back to you. Don't worry. Uh, if I have a chance, yeah. You will. Don't worry. We're not, we've got a long time to go yet, Mark. Uh, James Buzan, I want to bring you in here. There are others. Andrew Leslie might be the worst offender, but there's a lot of generals there. They're moving with inside the same city and claiming pretty hefty moving fees. Why are you always just picking on Andrew Leslie? I know he's got a liberal connections, but there are others. <laughs> Well, definitely this is the most egregious uh, abuse of the program uh, that we saw was through uh, Andrew Leslie and if uh, Justin Trudeau and, and other Liberals want to defend that uh, he's entitled to his entitlements, uh, that's up to them to explain that to taxpayers and voters. But, you know, we want to protect the integrity of this program. It's meant to help military families relocate across this country, either while they're in service or when they retire and can move back to communities that they can call home and be with their families. So it is, the integrity of the program has to be 
maintained, and that's why Minister Nicholson said that we're going to review this policy to ensure that the spirit is being respected. But what Andrew Leslie did was a pure lack of judgment. It was disrespectful to taxpayers' dollars, especially when he's just okay. moving from one beautiful home in Rockcliffe Park to another beautiful home in Rockcliffe Park in Ottawa just down the street. Uh, $72,000 is a lot to absorb, Don, and, and, and I know that because of CTV's uh, access to information request that this all came out, and, uh, and now we know that, that Andrew Leslie and others have abused this program. That's fair enough. Is uh, Major General Day, who moved in Ottawa, is he unethical and entitled to his entitlements? How about Rear Admiral Greenwood? He moved and collected for $43,000. $40,000 for Brigadier General Rochette. Are these all lumped in with the Andrew Leslie uh, entitlement to, entitled to their entitlements basket in your mind, James Bazan? Well, we're not going to defend... Uh, anyone that has taken advantage of taxpayers' dollars. We want to make sure that the program is there to help military families uh, relocate at, upon retirement, as well as you know making moves across this country and being deployed, which we call upon them to do from time to time. Uh, things that they don't have any opportunity to have any comment on, except when it comes down to their, their retirement, that they say, okay, I'm moving back to this community. But it was never meant to be abused in a way where Andrew Leslie and others, and if, if Mark Arno and, and, and the Liberals want to say that this is fine to move right within the city of of Ottawa, uh, only a few miles, and spend seventy-two thousand dollars. We know that we can move families across this country for half that money. Uh, yeah. So we know that this yeah. is a flagrant abuse and one that that uh, 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 we're going to take a hard I look at. Mark Garneau, should this policy be changed to eliminate people moving inside cities as their retirement gift? The government is perfectly free to revise the policy as long as they remember that whether it's a corporal or a general, the same policy will apply to each of them. Yeah. It's a question of principle. The agreement is that you will move somebody, whether it's three miles away or 3,000 miles away. That is the agreement. And by the way, James says it's CTV that did the access to information. It wasn't. It was global TV. And DND passed the information on to the minister's office. It's the minister's office that went to CTV because they wanted to specifically to, to smear an honorable Canadian soldier who has served his country honorably and with great distinction for 35 years. That's the truth of it. Well, I don't know how CTV got it. That was Omar Sachadina that got it. But anyway, let's move along. I do want to get your thoughts on that, Matthew. Uh, should this policy be rewritten to eliminate uh, same city relocations? Well, the, the Liberals have strange notions of principles, Don. I mean, we, we also have moving expense policies for the armed forces personnel that have left uh, 150 military families short thousands of dollars because uh, they've had to be to move during depressed real estate markets and so clearly uh, something needs to change one has to be extremely disappointed uh, with the conservative government to have been presiding over uh, all of these moves within a few miles and handing over public money to the tune of six hundred thousand dollars for those purposes and there's clearly inequities in the in the moving expense policies of this government and and uh, Don these aren't, this isn't rocket science. Uh, it doesn't take a lot to figure out how to write up a reasonable, fair, equitable uh, moving policy uh, that will treat all military personnel fairly and, and, um, and pay them in, in, w along with the intent of the policy, which was to give them one last move to a place that they, they choose to live for themselves. And that does not mean from one neighborhood to another neighborhood in the same city, surely. You know, James Bazan, Matthew's got a point here on a lot of soldiers are forced to relocate from one base to another. Sometimes they lose a lot of money in that relocation. Wouldn't the money be better spent helping those soldiers rather than give everyone a five-star moving break when they're moving out of the top brass? 150 families, Don, losing tens of thousands each. And, and let me just comment on that, Don. And, 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 if, and if, if you look at this, $72,000 that was claimed uh, uh, by Mr. Leslie could have gone a long way to helping a lot of those families that, that the Ombudsman has pointed out as, as, as having difficulties when they had to move during depressed times uh, when the market was down. So, you know, what really uh, I think sits in, in the craw of a lot of people, including serving members, is that, that, that Andrew Leslie and other generals have taken advantage of this program, especially when Andrew Leslie, who wrote the transformation report, suggested that we cut the fat, that we, we have more teeth and less tail. Well, I guess he meant that, to, that, that applied to everyone else but himself. 
Okay, uh, Mark, no last word. General Leslie, General Leslie, G General Leslie uh, uh, was allowed to use uh, the relocation program like everybody else. But it was, it was handled judgment, Mark. by an independent bad company under. It was handled by an independent company under contract right, to but he submitted all the expenses. He, he knew was, was allowed through. to do it just like anybody Over else 40, was allowed to do it. This is a man who moved 18 times in 35 years serving his country. And this is a deliberate smear against him by the Conservatives, and the, uh, there's no question about it. Well, he was singled out by a, the Conservatives, and 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 it it shows the Conservative tactics. They're up to it again. James put a reasonable okay, well, policy in place to protect public money. Fair enough. And that's what the, exactly the Minister you, is making the review of the policy. Well, Minister Nichols okay, said we're stuff. reviewing this policy. Said should we protect taxpayers? Well, James Bazan, I want to go to you on this. Uh, you you've spoken passionately on the Ukraine situation. Uh, the embassy, our embassy, is actually being occupied by protesters. Fourteen dead, six policemen among them. Uh, what can Canada do? This tragedy is getting worse by the minute. Yeah, things that really have spiraled downhill in the, in the last uh, 48 hours uh, on the streets of Kiev and elsewhere across Ukraine. Uh, I'm very concerned about how things uh, have uh, devolved. Uh, it's definitely a move by Yanukovych and his government to again quash the rights of, of the Ukrainian people. Uh, so we do have to look at pulling more of our diplomatic levers. We have to have uh, the European Union and the Americans also pull the same levers. So even though we brought in sanctions uh, already in place on the the movement of, of high-ranking Ukrainian officials. That has to be expanded now, and we have to look at uh, expanding those, those sanctions beyond that to ensure that uh, where these oligarchs and government leaders like Yanukovych and others are stashing their money across this uh, planet, and especially in Europe, uh, that those dollars are frozen up so they can't use uh, the dollars that they have illicitly taken away from the, the people of Ukraine uh, to line their own pockets, but now also uh, can use those dollars to fund uh, the terror that, that we're seeing taking place on the streets of Kiev. Mark Garneau, we're looking at live footage from Kiev. I wonder if I could get your thoughts uh, on what the government could and should do. Yes, we, uh, we asked for sanctions to be actually imposed last uh, December. The government has not acted on it. They've just done a, a small gesture, which is a visa ban. I recently asked the Parliamentary Committee on Foreign Affairs to receive witnesses on the Ukrainian situation. They've agreed to do it. It's going to happen uh, in two sessions starting next week. We definitely need to receive these witness statements, and we need to decide on not just talking, but actually taking concrete action to show Ukrainian Canadians that uh, we're not just watching this, but we are actually taking measures to, uh, to, to address this situation where the Yanukovych uh, government is, uh, is, uh, is basically uh, s uh, s stopping democracy from taking place. Well, got agreement by the Conservatives and Liberals on a point. Quick last word to you, Matthew. Well, only that we're, Don, we're saddened by the loss of life, clearly, and the abuse of human rights in the country, and, um, and clearly measures should have been taken long ago. This, this was foreseeable, uh, and all levers should be pulled to bring peace to that country. Okay, great. We appreciate the unanimity of opinion on that one. Uh, thank you all. We appreciate you joining us on this one. Okay.